Welcome everybody to day two. Yes, you'll notice I'm on my feet this morning. So get on your feet too. I'm just gonna take a moment, make sure the technology is working. We're gonna start with movement. Oh yeah, bouncing. I'm gonna tell you why this is so important once we get going. Doreen, I see you. Come on in once you get here, say hello. Uh, I want to just, like I said, make sure all our, our, our tech pieces are working here. Dude, I'm still here, I'm still here. Masterclass. There we go. Yes, we are indeed live. I love it. All right, say hello to me once you come in. I wanna say hello to you also. Let me know where you're tuning in from so I can begin the visual, the visual pings. All right, so here's why I want you bouncing. Actually, before I tell you why to bounce, let me give you the proper form to bounce. We're just gonna bounce for just a little bit here. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart, okay? Spread those toes for a second, wiggle them, feel the toes, rock back and forth. Feel the balance between the front of the foot, the back of the foot, the heel, high jali. Find all four corners of your feet and balance yourself on all four corners. Good morning, Trisha. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Jean. And I want you to gently start the bouncing, okay? What we're gonna do, honor any restrictions inside of your body, but what we're doing here is we're creating something known as piezoelectric energy. I'm gonna tell you more about piezoelectric energy as we move through this process today. But the purpose of this is to create some friction in the bones, because we're gonna feel that energy, with the idea that what we're doing is we're calling out, we're extracting out ancient wisdom, the truth of who you are, from your bones, carried in your bones, your ancestry, people. All right, with keeping the feet planted, gentle twist of the spine, flop yourself to one side, flop a little harder if you can take it. If your body's asking for gentle, listen. But we want to generate some energy here. We're also moving lymph in the body. Incredibly important to move the lymph. Back, flop it hard, flop it hard. We're gonna stop in three, two, one, stop. Put your hands in like that little energy ball. Feel that? Take a moment. Feel your energy. Morning, Al. Whoo, you feel that? Let it sink into the body. This is your ancient wisdom. The truth of who you are. The ancient masters know the secrets of how to extract this from your field. How to bring it into your awareness. And these practices are resurfacing now. <sighs> this is why performers lip sync. I didn't even really do that much, but geez. Hang on, let me ground in here. It's the talking, oops, why you're bouncing that is, that is the thing. Um, I bring some notes in here. This is piezoelectric energy, knowledge, ancient wisdom from inside of you, that when you know the secrets of how to begin extracting these pieces, your journey of enlightenment becomes a lot, a lot easier. They're powerful things, big things, heavy things, things that feel dense, that trip us up along the way. If we do not have the proper skills to manage the energies as we're waking up, when we're doing this quantum work, like we're doing here this week in the master class, merging with master intelligence. It's important that we're not only learning with the mind, but we're learning with the body. That's why we, we start by priming the body, doing a little uh, Tai Chi, Qigong movement, breath work, yoga is fantastic too. Erica Alvarez mentioned that she had a, a nice response yesterday to the gentle tapping that we were doing. These are all important practices that must be married into the internal work that we're doing. So good job on using another one of those seven hermetic principles, the law of gender. We're actually using the divine masculine and the divine feminine energy together, which is of the utmost importance if you are going to tap master intelligence. Master intelligence it is not um, 
a space that you can reach and that you can interface with, that you can become, that you can embody by just accessing the divine feminine or just accessing the divine masculine. They have to work together. And that's a very poetic divine masculine, divine feminine. Bring them together, the yin and the yang. Very poetic. What does it mean in real life? It means you do a little exercise to prime the body very specifically with intelligence behind it that prepares you to receive and to be relaxed in a space when you come present with the awareness of who you are. Because truly, when you come face to face with who you are, with master intelligence, with God incarnate, goddess incarnate, which is what we talked about yesterday. Trust me, the first moments that you glimpse yourself in this way, it's scary. You have fear. So we're going to talk about transcending that fear today because now is the time. For me, there's no other truth but this. Oh, really? I'm always, I always like finding higher states of truth. So it's scared. It scares me a little bit to hear them say that and then tell me to say it to you. All right. I'll just be brave and say it. I believe that this is the point in the collective history of humanity when the greatest works through each visionary are being called forward. I don't care how much success you've had, how many great things you've accomplished, how amazing your life is. You have not reached your full potential yet and your full potential is being called through you right now. Every single person on the planet. You know why? Because if you had reached your full potential, you would have reached a state of ascended mastery where your ass become rainbow light body and you disappear from the planet. But you haven't disappeared yet. You're sitting here with me. Listen to me as I get going preaching. I love to preach it to y'all. Okay? Yesterday, I reminded you Gently, and then hope, hopefully, during the rest of your processing time yesterday, when you realized, oh man, I am master intelligence energy. Where am I playing small if you did your homework? Which, by the way, why I call this homework, this, I was telling my, my friend Nicole, I need to call this the book of wins. Who wants to do homework? This is a playbook? This is your sacred book of wins. All right? As you, yes, Arcadia, I saw you post yours. I will definitely get in there today. Yesterday was a crazy day. Um, and today is not so crazy. So I'm really excited to dig in there on the homework with you guys. But you dove in. You said, where am I still playing small? And what's the price I'm paying? What's the impact of playing small? Hopefully, your butt clenched a little bit. Urgh! When you come face to face with yourself as God, that's a very sacred moment. Okay, I'm going to tell you a, a moment that I had an extra dimensional encounter, a physical encounter that I believe was an ascended master, perhaps an aspect of myself, depending on what story construct works for you. It scared me a little bit. I'm going to tell you guys about that. All right, so we are going to reframe fear today. Because fear can totally stand in your way, like it can paralyze you, and it's a great energy. When I teach you what I'm going to teach you today about how to alchemize fear, how to properly work with fear, usually, not usually, always, if we're afraid of something, it's because we don't understand it. There's ignorance involved. Super easy. We're ignorant. That's okay. We're afraid of fear because we're ignorant to what we're really afraid of. We haven't really gotten in there. We haven't learned how to isolate and work with that energy until now, until today. Which is part of the freaking amazingness of the Akashic Records is they break down information and allow you to understand it and assimilate it in a way that you can put aha moments to use in your life and change your life forever. I actually... <laughs> You guys know I have a history in Hollywood of performing, so just like I used to practice my scripts before I would go into an audition, like I take, I've got notes everywhere on this day right here, day two. So I tune in, I go into the records um, weeks before I bring through a training like this. I go in 
the weekend before deeply in the records. I'm going in every day, every night. I'm in the records right now as I'm tuning in to what I want to bring through to you guys today and I'm practicing in my mind because I like to entertain you and get all the good juicy pieces in as well as be a fabulous teacher. Every time I show up to practice with myself in my mind, new information comes through. I'm like, seriously guys, I'm writing this shit down everywhere. My intention today, let me slow down for a minute so you guys can slow down too. <laughs> we got a nice rhythm, we get going and then we oh, slow down. Breathe with me, take a breath. My intention is that whatever comes through in this short time that we have together is just what you need to hear. Because there's been a wealth of information. There's no way I can get it all into this bit, but we're gonna go as deep as we can and as potent as we can. And you're worth it because you're the vision keeper. You hold the imagination, the tools, the energy, the blueprint of what we need to transform in society right now. It's your, your masterpiece is being called forward. All right, I think you guys know me, I'm Emily. Founder, director here inside of the Academy a mentor to visionaries who are ready to access the field of the Akash, who are ready for a reconnection point into master intelligence, and who are ready to accept the responsibility that comes with that, which isn't everybody. And that's okay. But for those of you who are ready, it takes a very special container. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're doing the work. Thank you. I love my job so much. I'm sitting here at three in the morning, just overflowing with how much I love my job. So I want to just thank you all because if people don't show up and receive what it is that excites me that I put into a container to share with the world, then I'm just sitting here doing it by myself. So thank you really deeply for being, being a part of this with me. Okay. So we are going to now break down um, how you guys can find this moment. There's, there's one single little moment that if you can isolate this moment, you're going to learn how to work with fear. You're going to learn how to alchemize fear. And this moment is truly responsible for the holographic reality that you create. Okay. So let me see how, let me just like, how are we going to come out on this? Breaking it, breaking it, breaking it down. All right. So here's the thing. I'm going to start here. Let me know if you guys can see this because I printed it backwards so that it's, yeah, you guys can see, oh, wait, it's, up, it's upside down, but at least it's the right way. You see it? Z equals Z squared plus C. We're going to start right here. I'm going to give you a little scientific breakdown behind this one single moment that tells this code to start working. This code right here, Z equals Z squared plus C, I learned this from Greg Braden. This is the self-replicating code that tells the holographic matrix, the field around us, how to start replicating itself. Replicating itself positively in the direction of flow and abundance or downward spiral in the direction of resistance and bullshit, which nobody wants to live down there, okay? So I'm gonna give you the tools so that you can understand how this works. Everything that we experience in this world comes from a thought. It's the principle of mentalism. I gave you the seven hermetic principles. Number one, the mind has the ability to create or to uncreate. Your mind interacts with this code right here. I'm gonna tell you how this code works. And that's what you start experiencing in the world. So the Fibonacci sequence, it's that cool spiral that you see in the shell. It goes infinitely this way, but guys, it goes infinitely small as well. It can go either direction. It, it goes either direction. Self-replicating code. Okay, so here's how it works for us. Karma. Karma is one of the biggest self-replicating patterns that we experience, right? Here's how we begin to change our experience. We know that what the vibration that we put out into the field that tells the field what we want to experience 
starts from a mental construct, a thought that we think, and is fueled by emotion. Then the thought kicks the emotion in. Emotion is what makes you such a powerful manifester, creator, your emotion, your imagination. But your brain tells the emotion to kick in, and then together the mind and the emotion begin working, interacting with the field, telling it, informing it what that charge is, the collective charge of your thoughts and emotions. Okay? So that's your pattern, Z. Z is the pattern that comes up in your life that causes you to have a reaction to something. These patterns come up over and over and over again. Okay, so Z is the pattern. Z squared. Yeah, this means the patterns come up one more time. Plus, oops, plus C. C is a new input. Whatever the new thing is that made the pattern come up, the self-replicating pattern where you either judge yourself or you reward yourself, where you hate yourself, where you give yourself grace. Pattern. It's your pattern. Your pattern comes up. It gets triggered by something in life. So here comes your pattern again. Whatever the emotional output, or I should say the energetic charge, the emotional plus the mental output is here, however you collectively feel, that's what you're telling the field to give you more of. So this becomes the input again. It becomes the self-replicating pattern in a particular direction, you get to decide the direction. All right, so is this making sense so far? It's important that you understand how the holographic code works. So this is how the code's working. Next, I'm gonna tell you the moment that you begin interacting with the code. I wanna make sure this lands. Any questions about this? All right, I don't see any questions coming in. I'm probably already damn over time. I better check my time. 8.15, nice. <laughs> Might, might only be five minutes over today. Okay. Long as we got this, if you have questions, I'll go back and answer them. I want to go on to the next thing. Where is the moment where you command the field of mentalism? It's when you understand. I'm going to bring in another law for you guys. One of these mentalism. Not mentalism, sorry. Hermetic principles. What's so cool is that they all inform each other. This idea of the principle of mentalism. I see my curtain in the back there. Paula, is that you? It is you. I didn't know Polly was in here. The law of polarity, which we talked about yesterday. We started diving in and attuning ourselves to this law of polarity. We examined it from the perspective of unity versus separation. Okay. The law of polarity also is going to inform this law, the law of mentalism, and help you have a better command over it. Okay, Fear and potential are the exact same energy. However, they're exercised in opposite directions. So you tell the self-replicating code based on your response what direction am I going to go? Is there the same? You see that? This right here, this moment of isolation is where you realize these are the same energies. I get to communicate with the, the code in any way that I want to. But of course, when you glimpse yourself is God, I'm going to say it's natural for your fear to come up. So how do you make a choice not to go into fear when it feels like it's an automatic response? Here's what you realize. Here's what's going on inside of you. In that moment that the trigger comes up, the choice that determines which direction you are going to go is your reaction to whatever the stimulus was, whatever the impulse was. And there are, there are two reactions. You can get judgmental or you can get curious. And when you get judgmental, you constrict. And you back away from something and your ignorance kicks in because you don't have full intelligence of what's going on. And that's when fear takes over and you... You go down the fear direction. Getting curious changes it all. Getting curious is an open, expansive energy. 
So if in this moment, when you notice your trigger, or as soon as you notice your trigger, or as soon as you notice the body going into contraction, sometimes you won't notice your mind or your emotions going into contraction, but as you train the subtle body more as we did in the beginning today, you might begin to notice a stomach ache or a headache or something in your physical body giving you a response that lets you know that you've gone into contraction, you've gone into separation, you've let go of master intelligence of your God self, and then you can course correct. You can choose to get curious. Because when we're curious, we ask questions and questions open up possibility. That is how you alchemize fear. Okay? Alchemizing, high level skill. It means turning a denser energy into a higher level energy. As you are now aware that you are master intelligence, you have a responsibility to use your skills and alchemy is one of them. And if you do not know how to transmute fear into something higher, you will be stopped in your tracks moving forward in your quest for enlightenment, in your quest for uh, understanding yourself as God, goddess, having power, having impact. It stops. Alchemy is so important. Now, what happens to the alchemist who gets really good at turning lead into gold? Your ass get really happy when you come across a pile of lead. That's your fear. So when you notice your fear, you now have a new construct. It's not the same construct that makes you shrink away. It's the difference between Yaira and Peshad. This is... A, a more nuanced breakdown of how these, uh, how fear actually works. Peshat is the fear energy that the caveman has when you better run because the saber-toothed tiger chasing your ass. That's when you run. And then you have Yaira energy, which interestingly feels similar within the body, which is why we can go to default and be like, oh, I'm afraid. But really, it's that, it's like the butterflies in your belly before you fly. When you begin to reframe fear as energy that is potential, you're going to start getting really excited about finding your edges. It's going to be more and more comfortable for you to see yourself as the God potential because now you have tools that you can actually step into it. Okay. I'm going to give you a chance right now to exercise, have an activation of curiosity rather than judgment. And I'm going to give you another tool right now. This is a mudra. Mudra is, again, this is ancient wisdom. I gave you my modern day interpretation of the science you break down. Find the moment. Here's what it means in real life. It's the moment that you choose to be judgmental or curious. You're going to have to train yourself. You're not going to be able to do it right away. All of these skills that I'm giving you all this week, they require training. We can only cover so much while we're here. Okay? But as you begin training yourself, you're going to be very sharp, masterful at beginning to create and transmute your reality. There's ancient wisdom. There's modern wisdom. I want to give you a piece of ancient wisdom. This is a mudra. This basically turns your hands and body into a lightning rod of particular reception. If you want to open up to potential, I want you to lace your fingers like this. Lay them up on your lap. Practice relaxing your body while I tell you this crazy ass story where you can judge me or you can get curious. I told you about piezoelectric energy. One of the greatest places to find this piezoelectric energy is Mount Shasta and Mount Shasta is a particular vortex. All of the vortexes on Mother Earth are enlivening right now. Actually, Mother Earth is the one who is going through the consciousness expansion. Her Schumann resonances are what are upgrading. We're experiencing that because our asses are on the planet. We're experiencing what she's experiencing. Okay? Mother Earth is going through this giant up level. And as this is happening, her vortexes, her sacred sites are becoming enlivened with energy like never before. I have been called to work very deeply with Mount Shasta over the course of the past several years. I've been on retreat several times by myself. I've taken groups into Mount Shasta. There's another group going this June. So if you want to get on that list, come on. But I'm growing, transforming, expanding too. My greatest works are being called through right now as well. For many years, I have been speaking of wanting to create and facilitate experiences where my tribe has a visceral interaction with an ascended master who appears there before us like Jesus did to the disciples 
after they took him down, literally figuratively, okay? I don't know how this is gonna happen. I don't have any idea. I've learned not to be afraid and to like lean into the potential. Yeah, I realize it sounds pretty crazy. I bring it. This is me reinventing. This is me having a big dream. It's not me making anything up. That would be my ego telling me I was making it up. I can't make anything up. All I do is tune in to everything that's already there and what's important and alive to me, what creates my story, what empowers and enlivens me comes alive in my field. And then I have the choice. Am I going to grab it and play with it or am I going to shy away from it? How many of you want to come to an experience where we call in Ascended Masters? Yeah! Can't find that anywhere. Everywhere. We had some amazing experiences the first time at Shasta. Okay? Recently, I have been invited. It feels like a dream scenario. I've been invited by a film crew from Gaia TV along with one of the keepers of the 12 crystal skulls of the planet and an individual who is pretty famous in the the woo-woo world talking about his first-hand encounter going into the interdimensional city inside of Mount Shasta known as Mount Telos. I'm sorry, which is known as just Telos. <laughs> and these are the refugees of ancient Lemuria. I've had a lot of contact with them in the astral realms. I believe I had a physical contact last week. Okay, so I'm sitting in my office and I believe that this is preparing me for my next ex expedition into Shasta. And the one after that, I'm going to be taking people with me. I'll tell you more about that by the end of the week. So I'm sitting in my office and it's three, it's between three and three 30 in the morning. And I hear an owl and owls are predecessors to extra dimensional or ET contact ET extraterrestrial, meaning off planet ED extra dimensional, potentially on planet. All right, so I believe that I had one, an encounter with an ED, a potentially on planet, but not in the same human form of density that you and I are in, okay? So I hear the owl, who, 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 I get like the ripple, oh, okay, who's here? I have a door out of my office that I'm out stargazing. It's one of the reasons I love being up at that time, is that I'm out stargazing constantly. And I walk outside and I instantly notice there's like this weird feathery like grid of clouds. Never seen anything like this over the sky. I notice my thought is, oh, I wonder what plasma they injected into the field. So there can be some otherworldly things happening. Started to get excited and a little nervous at the same time, right? And then I hear a rustling. I didn't have a lot of time to stay with any kind of fear it was starting to come up but it was like my attention was curiously jumping from one awareness to another that didn't really give me much time to hang on to the fear so the next thing i hear is this rustle in the bushes and i i i, I don't know if i saw them or if i just figured it it seemed like i saw like energy moving actually in the bushes oh there are a couple birds in the bush hang on a second it's three in the morning birds are not at three in the morning those aren't birds in the bush a little more belly drop right there. And then I hear more rustling and I look up. And you guys, I live on a cul-de-sac. So not a lot of people dressed in all white and hoods walking through my neighborhood at three in the morning. I've never seen that before. I look up and I see walking on the other side of the street of my cul-de-sac, human form, very physical, dressed in white, white, white hoodie, which it took me a second to get like the wink and the nod. Oh yeah, the white hood just walking by, didn't make any eye contact, didn't do anything, th like stayed at a very non-threatening distance. And I didn't run inside. And I didn't like, I, it, it, it took me at least 24 to 48 hours to fully process what had even happened. Another uh, encounter within, I would say 36 hours of that, that helped me more. Literally, I had a Merlin stone in my pocket and that thing went off. It bzzz, like tased me. What the heck? That helped me to assimilate. Sleep also helped me to assimilate. But it took a while for me to even be like, oh, holy cow. I've made really 
bold statements about the kind of container that I want to create and usher for my, my tribe. Truly, if a spaceship were to come down right now and the Galactic Federation were to start coming out, I would be a little scared. Coming face to face with the potentiality of what it means to experience what we haven't experienced so viscerally in a long time here on the planet scares me a little bit. So I need to go, now that I've made this decision, this declaration, the universe shows up to test me or I'll own it. I show up as the universe to test me or I show up as an ascended master. Slowly allowing myself to integrate into what these experiences that humans can't really explain or wrap our heads around now, but man, don't you want to experience that magic? I do. So this was my experience. And yeah, it scared me. And I found the edge of my fear and I stood there in potential rather than being afraid. Rather than judging, oh shit, is that person going to harm me? Who's that coming? What the hell? And running inside, I was curious. This is how it shows up on the microcosm in your real life. And the work truly is this magical. The work is not only the internal reflection that we do, the aha moments that we receive that make us powerful, that make us, that help us, that help lead us to the courage to make powerful decisions that change our lives. And then we get to do magical things like you only see on the screen in Hollywood movies these ancient mystical practices or or they're or they're represented in a fictional kind of way time travel all of these things are real and they're presenting themselves to us they're opening they're integrating into our world and i'm so honored and excited to be somebody who gets to usher this with you all okay back to your workbooks your homework your play work for tonight is to do the wanderers quiz now i believe that every single one of you here listening that you are an ascended master in another lifetime you've already graduated from this plane you've agreed to come back right now and to embody the experience and be the ascended master but not in the same template of yeshua or buddha or lao tzu or who we think of as the ascended masters but as the everyman who's going through the process of waking up in real time of fucking it up of fixing it up of cleaning it up and of helping others along the way that's what the template of an ascended master looks like and i believe that you are one of them i believe that you are a star seed that you contain special wisdom and knowledge. The Palladians, guess what? They do relationships differently. They, they raise children differently. They do, they do economy differently. Sirius, Andromeda, Vega, all of these different starseed locations have different templates. And we need those right now. I need you to wake up and remember who you are. Come on. So we can get to work figuring out how you can show up and help others with your knowledge and your gifts. Okay. But first you have to be willing to be a part of a bigger story. You got to let go of the judgment and get curious. And if you think that reincarnation and oh, I'm talking to my tribe, you guys don't think it's bullshit, but let's say you have a little bit of resistance coming up. Practice being playful, being curious rather than being judgmental. Go through this wanderers quiz and see if there aren't pieces of you and the truth of who you are, that there's not some remembrance. That invites you into a bigger story, because for those of you who are brave enough and ready to step into that bigger story, another one of my superpowers is reverse engineering the dream life. Okay. It's 19 year old, girl from small town Missouri the quintessential story of wanting to be seek my fame and fortune in Hollywood quit in college 
Midwest, get off the bus in Hollywood, oh shit. And then making it, that's me. I have the ability to hand that template over in legacy so that you can create things that, I guess it can only be imagined right now on this planet. All right, I love you. If this has served you today, give me some love likes, hearts across the screen. Drastically over today, just 15 minutes to go like this. All right, I love you all. I'm super excited tomorrow. We're gonna to talk more about superpowers. I've shared with you what some of my superpowers are and how I've been able to dissect them and see what they are. That's how you're gonna be able to know and work with yours is we gotta see them and we gotta figure out how to work with them. So we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow. I love you all. Good, good, good. Arcadia says you crack me up, great. Gotta, gotta have a little entertainment while we're doing this. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Mwah.